and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always got something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays. I am your host, Adam Pedal. And I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. And we got so many Toronto Blue Jays storylines that we have got to get into in this episode, folks. Lots of stuff going on with the Blue Jays and lots of stuff coming up. Before we do, big shout out to our sponsor of this video, Betway. You guys are freaking awesome. Best place to place your bets. And also, guys, like and subscribe to the channel. We would so appreciate it. All right. Another massive shout out goes to Jay's Journal. These mm -hmm. guys are phenomenal. They're consistently posting just the best articles. They have another one out here that absolutely slaps. It's real good. And we and I think a lot of the storylines that they talk about here really resonate yes. with us, with what we think the Toronto Blue Jays should be doing. Let's kick it off with this first one here. Looking at the second, oh, no, 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 no. Looking at <laughs> the relief pitchers. Yeah, yeah. Zach Pop specifically, yeah. dude. T tell us a little bit about what they're saying. Yeah, well, basically, they're suggesting that Zach Pop should be given higher leverage roles. I mean, he's been kind of coming out in that, like, fifth inning, sixth inning role, kind of right after the starting pitcher is out of the game. Mm -hmm. And more in low leverage situations, too. A lot of uh, not really close games, either we're behind or we're behind by a lot. Uh, they'll usually throw a Zach Pop. Now, I think, and I agree with Jay's journals, that he should be getting a little bit of a promotion in this Blue Jays bullpen. It is early, but I mean, if you take a look at every other guy in the bullpen, Zach Pop's got, actually he does, have the best ERA, and he has the lowest whip of any Blue Jay bullpen guy. And he's been doing it over a decent amount of innings. Eight and one-thirds inning pitch, right? Yeah. That's up there with Simber and Romano. Yeah. I really like what I'm seeing from Zach Pop. He's got great movement and location mm -hmm. on all of his pitches. I think we should start to promote him a little bit while we have people like Anthony Bass struggling, you know? And, and yeah. Jimmy Garcia giving up some runs the other night. I think maybe there will be an opportunity for him when he's rested. If a situation comes tonight in the next few days, mm -hmm. maybe, we, maybe we give him a shot in the high, high level situation you know i i don't disagree with that man however i will like push back just a little bit on this right, and right. and i don't think that this is going to continue at least i hope this doesn't continue but i would argue that zach pop and i mean also shout out to adam simber adam simber is phenomenal yeah, man yeah, like, yeah, he, yeah. he deserves all of the credit in the world but like the zach pop the adam simbers of the world they are a massive reason, in my opinion, that we have the win total that we currently have. Right I now. agree. We're above 500 because we have the most comeback wins in MLB, right? So we're getting down. Then we're putting these guys out like a Zach Pop. It's like, oh, we got to eat innings. We'll throw up the Zach right, Pop right. out. And he's actually giving the offense an opportunity right. to come back in those games. So as much as I want to promote him and like I do think that he deserves to be in situations where we're already winning mm -hmm. I would also argue that it's like having him there is giving the offense a chance mm -hmm. to come back in the game and then and then get the W's that we have whereas if we threw out like a, a nobody let's just say that we still have Trent Thornton right, right right maybe we don't have as many come from behind wins because they right. score a bunch more right I hear what you're saying I hear what you're saying but you know I mean hey if the opportunity arises yeah and some guys are rest are maybe a little bit um overworked in that bullpen I mean, you got to give your boy Zach Pop a chance. He's been looking like one of the best relievers, and I trust him. Honestly, mm -hmm. he's rising up in my trust scale because every you're right. Every time I see him, he's shutting down a rally. He's coming in in, in the middle of an inning and, and stranding base runners, yeah. right? I really like what I'm seeing out of him, but we'll see. Again, Anthony Bass has been kind of falling down the charts recently as you see his usage. Yeah. You know, it's not just because of the incident of what happened. The, it's all before. Yeah, he's having, yeah. Some, having some problem, problems yeah. on the flight. You know, it's getting right. in his head. He's pitching badly. Right, it's the whole right. Thing. I think maybe just maybe a little bit of a reverse role until uh, Anthony Bass finds his way. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm kind of just hoping that that our starting pitching can figure its stuff out. Yeah. And then we big. don't need to be behind all the time. And then we can throw Anth or uh, we can't throw Zach Pop out in higher leverage situations. Why not? You know, because it's like <laughs> I just feel like because our starting pitching has been so bad right now, we wouldn't have the W's had these guys in the back end of the bullpen yeah. popped out. So honestly, like credit where credit is due. Zach Pop, you are impressing, dude. And yeah. uh, and I do agree. Like you are a guy for the future, you know, 100 percent Jays bullpen. Have him for a very long time. Shut out the Canadian boy. Hell yeah, dude. All right. And then we have another one here from Jay's journal. Another move that the Blue Jays should consider. They're already starting to kind of do this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is making Whit Merrifield the primary starter at second base. We have the lineup tonight. This is being recorded on the final game of the Houston series. And you can see right here that he is in the starting lineup. He started, I think, another game in this series in a big series against the Tampa Bay Rays. So you're starting to see John Schneider slot him into that number one spot, that yeah. starting role. What do you think, Nick? Because I know early on we're debating Kirk. 
I don't, I don't think I, or not Kirk, excuse me, Espinal mm-hmm. uh, or Wit. I don't think anyone's debating uh, Kevin Biggio. Uh, but uh, what do you think about him right now over to get that starting job? Uh, give me the Renaissance here. That's what yeah, I'm asking yeah. right now. Give me the Renaissance here. These statistics, if you look at Whit Merrifield's statistics, they are eerily similar to when he's popping off in, in Kansas City, right? Mm-hmm. He's never been a high OPS guy. He's always been a. I hit the ball well, I get on base a lot, and I run the base paths mm-hmm. very effectively. And that's what you're seeing out of Whit Merrifield right now, batting 292. That's all I need from you. That's all I'm asking from you. Yeah. You can get hits. You're, you know, you're you're hitting like similarly, you're hitting better than George Springer right now. Yeah, yes. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you're doing that at the bottom. I love it. And again, I'm I think I'm always gonna be in the Espinal corner. I do think right, that Espinal right. deserves a shot. I think that he deserves playing time. But right now, so far in the early goings of the season, I cannot debate that Whit Merrifield has not been incredible. He has mm-hmm. been awesome so far. He's getting hits in the bottom of the order. I would argue that Whit Merrifield needs to be primarily the guy at second base, you know, maybe like 75%, 80% of the games. Like he's the dude. Yeah. And I would also argue that maybe you move him down in the lineup and put him nine. And I think, because mm. I think that he would be such a great dude to have flip that lineup over, mm-hmm. get on base for Guerrero and Bichette and Springer mm. and run those bases base paths well i mean he's down there with kiermaier it's either one or the other i mean kiermaier is kind of slumping right now but it's funny they're actually playing him not in this game but they actually play him like kind of upper in the order depending on the lefty righty you know they always like to do that lefty right yeah. thing in the bottom of the lineup so you know i saw him a lot in the Rays series batting in like the sixth spot mm-hmm. and he was driving in runs that's true you know what i mean so yeah. he, you know either he sets the table or he drives in the runs whatever happens he'll give me two hit wit give me those hits like man like I, i'm really i'm really excited for that renaissance year mm-hmm. and i think in the end of the day we do got to soak out as much value out of Whit Mayer yeah. for while we have him. And like you're saying 70% starts, sure. And then if he goes over and covers an outfield spot for a day, put, put right. Espinal on there. Great, exactly. Amazing. Like I think that's the split that you need to be yeah. having right now, man. Also to kind of a sidebar, I don't want to derail the entire mm-hmm. conversation here, but I want to be making this dude run as much oh, me as too. possible, man. Me too. Get him stealing bags. And maybe that's why I want him to be kind of in that really bottom of the order nine yeah, spot yeah. where it's like you almost don't have anything to lose. Yeah. Steal. You know, yeah. get around as, as much as you yeah. can and, and get in a spot where our dudes who are like at the top of the lineup can bat well, you home. He's got such a good skill of running those baseballs. Yeah. Bats. I mean, yeah, being anywhere in the bottom of the lineup, like if he is batting six or seven, you, you know, you could take a shot with, you know, Danny down there with yeah. Kiermaer down there, like, because their name may not get a hit, but yeah. if they do, he's in scoring position. Bang. He, he only comes has, around. And he only has two stolen bases this year. I, I kind of want to see I more want stealing more. I want more. from the Blue Jays you know, in general. Literally, I thought, yeah. I did think that with the with the pitch clock being a thing, uh, with the base pat or the, the bags, excuse yeah. me, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just frankly, what we saw from John Schneider last year, I'm kind of surprised yeah. that we're not having more stolen bags I because agree. we are capable of doing it. And last year, Schneider was ahead of everyone, man. When he took over, he was ahead of everyone with the aggression now the rest of the mlb is caught up I and know. it feels like he's kind of backing off I he's know. like oh, like oh no 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 never mind we're actually going to be playing a little bit more cautious no man steal some bags you can do it right now it's never been easier to steal a bag than right now and they're so young and, and and youthful they got the legs underneath them we're only we're 18th in baseball we only have 12 stolen bases yeah like that's not that's not a lot you guys see teams like the guardians Bro. the orioles just mm-hmm. swiping bags young teams yeah let's do it man let's Literally. go uh, like the orioles they're at that place right now where it's like we got nothing to lose let's steal as many bags and exactly. it's actually working exactly. for them it is working Dude, for them look at the caught stealing like it's basically almost guaranteed for those orioles it's literally nothing man yeah so no i i absolutely like do think that we need to be stealing more and whit merrifield is a perfect guy to be doing mm-hmm. it at the bottom of the mm-hmm. lineup let's move on to that coveted cleanup spot on the toronto blue jays time for a quick shout out to betway betway is the best place to make all of your sports bets on all of your favorite teams betway is also in collaboration with iGaming ontario must be 19 years older to participate and guys please bet responsibly now back to the content this one i really don't think that there should be any debate whatsoever mm-hmm. i know that it's early in the season we don't really like to be messing with those guys at the top too too much but what matt chapman has been doing has been so phenomenal mm-hmm. in the heart of the order it, it just seems it seems almost blasphemous not to have this guy batting fourth right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you see him there occasionally. I think when they have left handers in there, he'll slide up, but they're suggesting he should be batting cleanup all the time. Like all the time. And, and I agree. You're giving protection to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Like, 
the fact that he is hotter than Bo Bichette mm-hmm. and Vladdy right now means that, like, I'm going to have to pitch to Vladdy. You want right. to get Vladdy hot, you do that. Like, Varsho's doing all right right now. He's not doing horrible. He's not doing exceptional with yeah. the bat. But you put him there, and I understand they want to split up the righty-lefty. But is it really helping Vlad if, if I have, you know, one out in an inning? I, I'm just going to – or two outs in an inning. I'm just going to avoid Vladdy. Mm-hmm. Maybe take my chance with Varsho. Now, here's an argument. Here is an argument. And I don't know if there's any validity to this at all, to be honest, even though as I say it. But maybe maybe some people are thinking it, so I'm going to toss it in the Mm -hmm. universe. Do you think that maybe part of the reason why Matt Chapman is doing so well is because there's a lefty ahead of him, so the pitcher needs to like adjust to the lefty, and then they have to like get back to where See, they are, you know. And I maybe, don't know. maybe it's maybe See, it makes it more difficult. On that's them. where I lo- I don't I don't think they have stats on that. Maybe they do. Actually, mm-hmm. they might. If we go to Baseball Reference, if we go seeing where uh, if he's batting fifth, what right. his average is batting fifth. Yeah, that that's something. I might. Yo, I'm gonna actually look for take it. Take right a now. look, bro. Take I'm a look. look. I have no idea if that's a thing or not a thing. And again, like I don't want to take anything away from Matt Chapman because no. I know that him with his eyeball has been a phenomenal great but maybe just maybe having that breakup there is helpful a little bit and you know in these stats that we don't really know like these underlying statistics you mm-hmm. know food for thought there i know i'm looking for it right now i'm almost there just scrolling down baseball reference and no no actually he's, no <laughs> he's elite wherever he goes it doesn't matter <laughs> but he's especially elite batting cleanup okay so he should be batting cleanup yeah I'm there we sold. go i'm 100 percent sold man 429 with an ops of 1.270 wow. yeah yeah give me that all day Love every it. day completely agree with jay's journal on that one and then this one this last one here man once again shout out to jay's journal for just being absolute studs and getting everything 1000 percent right all of the time this is how you get close to my heart. <laughs> you say Alejandro Kirk should get the bulk of starts at catcher over Danny Jansen. I like Danny Jansen. I think he's a good it's player. Him. I'm really happy that he's on this team. I'm really happy that we decided to go with him. And I know that a lot of people like Gabriel Moreno. I personally like the move that we made, having Danny and having Kirk. However, you cannot deny that Kirk is the catcher of the future. And, you know, people are talking about this guy's pop time, all this stuff. I know it's not ideal, but it's getting better, I think. He threw, you know, he threw it, a, or got close <laughs> to throwing at a guy the other day. Yeah, he, he, yeah. he needs work no, for these guys. I know, I know, I know. Uh, no, I like Kirk too, man. I mean, like the other day, you saw him catch. Chris Bassett. Who started the season? It was Danny Chanson. Mm-hmm. Now you have Kirk cast, ca- uh, catching Chris Bassett, and mm-hmm. guess what happened? An exceptional start. That's true. I mean, I mean, Kirk's not really calling a game because it's Chris Bassett, yeah. but but who cares? It's working. You were giving him credit anyways, <laughs> man. Giving, I don't even hey, care. He's presenting the target. That's yeah. a, I don't know what it is about Kirk, but I just want to throw a ball accurately at him. Yeah. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and like this is not even taking into account the fact that Alejandro Kirk is pretty phenomenal with the baseball bat, yeah, guys. Yeah. With like his on base, he's he's what Biggio should have been. He mm-hmm. really is. He's what Biggio should have been because he can hit the ball and he's got such a good eyeball. And I love him where he is in the lineup because people will be on and mm-hmm. I, he can clutch up a hit. He also is so good at setting the table for the rest of the guys Passing too. The baton, you know, it's man. like if we have an inning where, you know, maybe one of the guys gets on, but then we get out, we don't score anything. Well, Kirk leads off the second. Yeah. You know, he's batting fifth, he's batting sixth, he leads off the second right now. And you give those guys at the bottom of the lineup an opportunity to score a run. Because I know that Alejandro Kirk is gonna get on base like you know, forty percent of the freaking time, right? I mean, he's almost there or, right yeah, now. Thirty-seven percent of the time, thirty-seven, right there, and like it's getting better. I mean, like it's climbing. I mean, these aren't attractive numbers with a six ninety OPS, but it's been climbing over the season. Mm-hmm. He's getting his walks, and the classic Kirk, you know, walk per strikeout is one yes. right now. That that's amazing. I yeah. mean, look, I mean, look at Kiermaier. That's that's not that good. But not you got Kirk. Good. You got Kirk passing Matal doing exactly what you're saying. So yeah, I mean, I'm ready to make that transition, especially with Danny off to the start that he's off at. Yeah. 097 batting average. I mean, he was dealing with a sickness to begin the year, mm-hmm. but until we see that vintage Danny that we saw the last couple of years, I mean it's your job, Kirk. Yeah. It's all for you, man. Now, buddy. I will say this. Danny Jansen is no stranger to cold starts, man. Yeah, absolutely. I still remember that one season where Danny Jansen was literally the worst qualified I batter for I almost two months. I it was remember. it was almost two months. Like, this guy was down batting, like, 30 
And yeah, that's not really even an exaggeration. Bad. It like really it was bad. very bad. And then he went on to actually have a really good season. He did. You know, so I mean, maybe this is just one of the characteristics that he has about himself. He starts out slow and come, you know, late May, June, like he starts to pick it up. But for right now, anyways, until that happens, Kirk, you're the man. Yeah, because that's the beautiful thing about the Toronto Blue Jays. You you can go and get other players in that position. Yeah. Like we're looking at second base, Wit's hot. Play him more. Literally. You know, Kirk's Kirk's getting hot more hotter. Like play him more. Like that's all we gotta do. Exactly. That's all we gotta worry about, man. If it ain't broken don't freaking fix it man. exactly exactly we got to talk about one more thing with the toronto blue jays facing off with the yankees man this yes. is going to be an absolutely electric series and the game that we are circling mm. on that series on that calendar man it is the saturday game alec manoa is going up against garrett cole in Let's yankee go. stadium these guys they have a freaking history. Yep. Manoa has called Garrett Cole out previously, saying that he is the worst cheater in MLB. Garrett Cole has called out Manoa in the middle of a game. Like, yeah. you know, and then Manoa yep. called him out afterwards, saying that he should pass the outie sign. So these guys do not like each mm. other at all. And I mean, there is history between the teams as well. So yeah. this is going to be awesome. Yeah, if I, if I am a MLB fan, or maybe I'm just starting to get into baseball, if I really wanted to fall in love with baseball, I would watch this game, folks. Mm -hmm. I am going to sit down on my butt on Saturday afternoon and watch this matchup because yeah. you're going to see both dugouts lock in. Mm -hmm. They want to beat the other team, especially in the first series, especially if this game could be a decider of who wins or we tie it up, especially with the big aces on the mound. And all the lineups are going to be locked in. Even though Alex has been off to a rough start, he's going to lock in. And Garrett Cole, he's been locked in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's going to be quite the matchup now. Uh, speaking of the performances of these guys, Garrett Cole, he's been off to a phenomenal start to begin the year. I mean, he's got a 0 0.95 ERA, so like he's not really doing much talking. But Alec Manoa, as we know, he's doing a lot of talking and he's not really showing. Are you worried about a potential, I don't want to say embarrassment, but almost an embarrassment well, if we show up and we we, we shit the bed right, with Alec Manoa? Right now, obviously, you look at these statistics and you think this is extremely one-sided, and especially being on the road, this can be a really tough matchup, but this is the perfect get-right game yeah. for Alec Manoa, and it's going to be tough. I know it's going to be difficult for him, but if he does come out and dominate and the Blue Jays do go out and win this game, he gives us six innings, no run ball, or just, you know, really, really good performances. That is like, we're back. We're a hundred percent back, ready to go. I just, I just out dueled who is right now, you know, the best pitcher in the American league. If he can do that on yeah. Saturday, I have no concerns about Manoa moving forward. Everything is forgiven. Yeah. We're good to go. Right. So yeah. I need to him to come out find the strike zone early mm -hmm. and get out of that first inning as quickly as possible, right? Because that's where the damage gets exactly. done. It, with these aces, if you don't get to them in the first inning, usually they settle in. And that, and when Manoa's gotten blown up this year, yeah. it's been in the first inning and he can't really adjust. So get out, get up ahead early. I think he'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I echo with all those thoughts, man. It's the command. Just get the command working and we should have a competitive game. The last thing we need is what we saw last uh, Sunday yeah. against the Tampa yeah, Bay Rays yeah. when the command was not there and we were out of the game by the second inning. Yes. You know, so hopefully we can get that going because that's going to be quite the electric game. And, and I will say this yeah. about the Blue Jays. I mean, we have uh, hit Garrett Cole pretty well. We have. We have, had, we have. we have hit Garrett Cole pretty yeah. well. He has looked filthy right now so far during this young season. But, I mean, if anyone can hit him, I do feel yep. like the Toronto Blue Jays, Guerrero, Bichette, these guys, Chapman. For, for some reason, <laughs> they just see his ball and, like, they, they, maybe they just Dude, read it better. Vladdy's I don't know. Vladdy had a three-home run game against Cole Literally, early last year. Just almost exactly a year ago, exactly. dude. I would not be surprised if we came out, we we slapped around Garrett Cole a little bit, but we're going to need Manoa to come mm -hmm. out and he be a lead, to. too. He needs to. Guys, let us know in the comments down below, what do you think about everything that we talked about in this video? Think of, what do you think about Whit Merrifield starting? Uh, a lot and Matt Chapman everything Kirk Kirk starting all of this and as well what are your thoughts about this big game Manoa versus Cole that's gonna be a headliner for mm -hmm. sure yeah guys please hit the like and subscribe button also three dollars a month come a Patreon member shout out and thank you to every single one of these current Patreon members also our YouTube members too both of you guys freaking awesome we appreciate you so much guys thank you so much for watching and go Chase go, go!